Joining me is Franak Vyakorka. He's the chief advisor to the opposition leader, Svetlana Tikesnovskaya, who we heard from just a little bit earlier. Thanks for, for joining us. First off, um, what are your thoughts about these EU sanctions? Have they gone far enough? Will they have an effect? Uh, thank you so much for having me. I think EU also shares responsibility for what's happening now in Belarus because the real repression started in Belarus last summer and the EU was very cautious and they did not react promptly uh, last fall and the last sanctions we saw were only in December. And right now, last, uh, last uh, Sunday incident was a wake-up call for the European leaders and forced them to act uh, bravely. Only now, nine months after all this repression started. Of course, it's not enough. Of course, 80 names on the sanction list we have right now, it's not enough and it will not force Lukashenko to step down or conduct new elections. Only sectorial, economic, broad sanctions on enterprises close to Lukashenko, on oligarchs close to Lukashenko will force him to make concessions. But also, let's not forget, it will work only in combination with assistance. On one hand, pressure on the regime, on the other hand, assistance to civil society. Right, because um, if you oftentimes these sanctions hurt people more than they hurt the people in power, and that is one of the concerns and one of the things you have to balance. I wonder, uh, we're hearing from opposition activists who are saying, look, if Lukashenko can force, divert a plane flying from one European Union country to another, land it forcibly in Minsk, arrest, arrest a regime opponent and his girlfriend, that no one is safe anywhere. Do you have concerns? I mean, do you have concerns for your safety? No one is safe anywhere. And I must say I am concerned about my safety, about my friends, about our team. Uh, yesterday we had a discussion when we decided to strengthen security for Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, for democratic leaders, for our office, because we know after Sunday, that they can follow us everywhere. We knew that KGB agents, they were following Roman Pratasevich in Athens airport on the EU territory, and they managed to stop this plane flying over Belarus territory from one European capital to another European capital. Unfortunately, we are living now in the uh, situation when we can be always monitored, followed, and Lukashenko's KGB people they are harsh and they can do harm to any of us at any moment. Lukashenko is the threat not only to Belarusians anymore. He is the threat to Europeans. And the sanctions needed to stop this lawlessness spread outside of Belarus. But how do you continue your work under these conditions? First of all, we will strengthen our structures in Belarus because we still have thousands of people, volunteers, doctors, journalists working under pressure. Many of mm -hmm. them are being detained and sentenced. Many people got sentenced to five, six, 15 years of prison. We just had the funeral today of activist who was killed in prison three days ago. Last week, the biggest internet portal of Belarus was closed. Every day, Lukashenko makes one attack, one after another. An European reaction can help to prevent the escalation of repressions. And we will be working on safety of ourselves, but also safety of the people on the ground. Have you, have any European governments from the EU been in touch with you about strengthening your security system or assisting you in the those efforts that you just outlined of, of continuing your activism, continuing your political uh, opposition yeah. to Lukashenko while remaining as safe as possible. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We are in touch with the uh, French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with the uh, British Office of Foreign Affairs. We are in touch with White House, with Jake Sullivan, uh, National Security Advisor. We are trying to develop the road map how to solve this crisis, how to stop Lukashenko, how to isolate him, but also how to lead the country into the new elections. Because the only solution of this crisis, Belarus is right now, to conduct free and fair elections. Because the last elections were rigged, Lukashenko lost these elections, and this is the basic problem we have to solve. Yeah, and how do you how do you get there? I mean, here you have a situation where you mention yourself that Lukashenko uh, essentially rigged the elections of last August 9th, and that the results were not legitimate, transparent results. 
Uh, you have dissidents mm -hmm. arrested. You, you mentioned yourself in custody that activists have died. How do you get to that end point? First of all, we have to put it on the top of the agenda of world leaders. G7 yeah. summit in London must discuss Belarus. UN Security Council must, to, must put Belarus on the priority list. Uh, Joe Biden, when, when he comes to Europe on the NATO summit, he can discuss Belarus as well. Uh, leaders of UK, European Union and United States can express their solidarity with Belarus by meeting Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, who represents interests of Belarusian people. It's very important to gather together to discuss the solution of the crisis at the high level conference. It's very important to recognize Lukashenko's regime as terrorist. We don't want North Korea to appear in the center of Europe and threatening everyone in the region. In order to stop this, pressure needed now. How are, are you optimistic? I mean, for instance, I think back a few years ago when critics of the Russian move to annex Crimea said the Europeans really allowed Vladimir Putin to do whatever he wanted there when it came to Ukraine. Why do you think this will be different? I think uh, lessons learned after Ukraine and Crimea happened and many European leaders realized that it's better to react quickly than to solve many uh, unsolvable problems after. Belarus is not divided to the West and the East. Belarus is pretty clear story. There is a black and white, very visible contrast. There is usurper, dictator who controls with the violence the situation in the country, and there are people who want changes. The only thing we ask from the EU and from the West to take the clear stand, the clear position, and to support those fighting for freedom. It's the, it can be success story. There is a good momentum. Lukashenko is very weak right now. He doesn't trust anyone. Even people around him, they are defecting. They are fleeing the country. And we have people mobilized, hopeful. They saw the reaction of the West. They saw the reaction of Joe Biden. They heard the reaction of Josep Borrell. Mm -hmm. What we need right now to give them more hope more energy, and to show that they're not alone in their fight for freedom. Uh, Franak Vyakorka, thank you very much. Uh, the chief advisor uh, for the opposition politician Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, thanks for joining us from Vilnius this evening.